In this video, I will let you know how to get started with the Arduino IoT Cloud using an ESP32 board. And after watching this video, you will be successfully able to make your very first project using this Arduino IoT Cloud, and using which you will be able to control the LED onto the ESP32 board as well as monitor the temperature and humidity sensors data using this DST11 sensor. And you will be able to control and monitor the things using both your web dashboard as well as mobile dashboard. So this is kind of a very basic video just to get started with the Arduino IoT Cloud. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by LTM, which is a PCB designer based software company. Now, let me tell you one very interesting, very unique feature about this software, which I bet you haven't seen in any other PCB designing software. And that feature is called as follow me mode. Now, this is truly very useful feature, which I can't explain it in simple words. Rather, let me show you the actual video of this particular feature. Have you seen that? the path automatically adapts the curve quite seamlessly. And now I can imagine making this kind of path in any other PCB designing software would be really a tedious task for sure. Now you can also try this and many other features of this PCB designing software by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Yes, by clicking on that link, you'll be getting a free trial version of LTM designer software. So go ahead, try it out. And if you find it interesting, you can purchase this software later on. So to get started with this Arduino IoT Cloud, you first need to go to create.arduino.cc and here you first of all need to create and log into your account. I'm already logged into my account. After that, just click on IoT Cloud. Okay, so Arduino IoT Cloud also offers a couple of plans which I'll be discussing at the end of this video, okay? Okay, so as soon as I click on IoT Cloud, I get this particular window. Here, first of all, we need to create a thing. Let us click on create thing. Now here, first of all, we need to create variables. Okay. So just click on add variable. After that, you just need to name the variable. So as we want to make a project of controlling one LED and monitor temperature, humidity sensors data. So in total, we require three different variables. Okay. So let's just add one by one. Uh, I will name the first variable as LED. After that, we need to select the variable type. Now this is same like we used to uh, add the data types like the integer, string, boolean, stuff like that, okay? But here they have mentioned kind of a generic terms, okay? Like it's an acceleration angle, stuff like that. So LED is, uh, we can say light. So I will search for light and yes, light is available. So basically it's a boolean variable, we can say. I'll click on light. After selecting that, it automatically creates a variable for us. Now here we have to define whether it is read or write or read only. So we can consider that all the sensors are read only variables uh, and all the output devices are read and write variables. Okay. As LED is an output device, I'll select read and write because we need to write some data onto that variable. Okay. So I'll select this permission. After that, we need to provide one more thing, which is variable update policy. Do we want to update the variable as soon as some changes happen or we want to update the variable periodically? In our case, as we want to change the LED status based on the button, I'll select on change only. After that, click on add variable. So with this, we have successfully added one variable. Let us similarly add two more variables. I'll click on add, give the second variable name as temperature. Its variable type will be, let's search for temperature. Okay, it's available, so I'll select temperature sensor. As you can see, the uh, variable is already uh, declared here. Its permission is already declared because as I said, sensors are read only variables. So it's uh, by default read only. And again, I, here I will select on change because as soon as the data is changed, I want to get the data. Click on add variable. And similarly, I will add one more variable whose name will be humidity. Its variable type will be, let's search for humidity. Okay, it's available. So I'll select humidity and the variable is declared. Its permission will be read only because we want to read the data again and its uh, update policy will be on change. Click on add variable. So this is how you can add variables according to the need of your project. Okay, I successfully added. After that, we need to select a device like on which device we are expecting or we need to upload a data or the code. I'll click on select device. And here we have two options. Is it an Arduino device or is it a third party device? So Arduino recently started accepting the third party devices like the ESP266 and ESP32 as well. So ESP32 is a third party device. I'll select a third party device here. Select ESP32 and I'll select the model as do it Dave Kit V1. Okay. After that, click on continue. Uh, we need to name the device. Let's just name it as my ESP32. Okay. Oh, special characters are not, not allowed. So my, let's just type underscore. Okay. Works. 
So after uh, adding your device, it will be creating two uh, credentials. We can say one is the device ID and next is the secret key. Now we need to save both this uh, parameters. We can say inside our computer because we will be requiring these com uh, parameters at the time of coding. Okay. So for that, you just need to click on download the PDF and it will automatically download the credentials PDF on your computer. As you can see, here is my uh, PDF containing all the data. After that, click on I saved my device ID and click on continue. With this, we have successfully added a device as well. And now we need to provide the Wi-Fi credentials because come on, this is an IoT project and this ESP board do require the internet connectivity. So just click on this configure button, provide your SID name. I'll provide the SID name of my Wi-Fi router. After that, I'll provide the password of my router. And after that, here we have to provide the secret key. Now you can get the secret key from this particular PDF. I will simply copy it and paste that thing here click on save so with this we have you know configured our device we can see okay now before moving to the coding part let's first configure the dashboard okay i'll click on the dashboard here not now and here i will select build dashboard so here one dashboard is created with the name untitled now here i will click on this icon to edit the dashboard and here i will click on add to add different different widgets so here are all the available widgets for our projects uh, they are kind of limited widgets if we compare it with the blink iot platform but yeah they are all the important widgets we can say and it will be enough for our majority of our projects okay so first of all i'll add a switch here to control the led i'll name it as led and i will link a variable to this switch okay so we need to define on which variable we need to send the data of this switch widget so i will select the led here i'll click on link variable so the led variable is linked with this button and after that i'll simply click on done so with this we have successfully configured the first widget similarly i will add two more widgets for two more parameters so for humidity let's just click on percentage i'll name it as humidity i'll link the variable humidity with this particular widget and click on done and similarly for temperature i will add a widget called as gauge i'll name it as temperature Come on, see. Okay, I'll link the variable temperature here. And you can also define the range, but 0 to 100 is enough for me. I'll click on done. So with this, we have added three widgets. Let's just add one more widget of a graph, we can say, a chart. And I will name it as temperature only. And I'll link the variable as temperature. Okay, that's it. Click on done. Okay, so we have successfully added uh, four different widgets. Now, let me tell you one thing here inside the Arduino IoT cloud platform, you don't need to create separate dashboard for mobile application and the web application. Uh, whatever you create onside the web application, it will be reflected directly to your mobile application without doing any changes. Okay, so both the dashboard are a common dashboard, we can say, unlike Blink IoT platform. Blink offers a web dashboard and mobile dashboard separately okay so that's it we have successfully created the dashboard now i will again go to things and uh, now it's the time to make the code for it i'll go to this untitled and here we will be going to the sketch option now one very great thing about this arduino IT cloud platform is you don't even need to have any any software any library to be installed onto your computer you just need to have a basic computer with the internet connectivity and all the things will be done inside this iot uh, arduino iot cloud platform only yes they do provide the online uh, arduino id or we can say code editor software with all the libraries already included on it so this is kind of a plus point for arduino because we don't require anything other than a computer with an internet connectivity that's it okay so yeah here is the code which is made particularly for our project as you can see these three variables are already declared uh, itself by this computer by this cloud platform which is temperature humidity and led and after that all the necessary lines are already added now we just need to uh, embed the logic for our project okay so what i will do is as you can see here one function is already created as on led chain so as soon as the uh, status of the button changes this function will be called now here we have to define what we have to do as soon as the button is changed so i want to turn on and off the led based on this uh, on the button status okay so for that what i will do is here i will write as uh, if led is equal to equal to one uh, if the data uh, from if the data of the led variable is coming as one 
means the button is turned on now let me tell you here you don't need to define this led variable because it is already defined here globally okay so we can directly write this statement after that if the data is one i want to turn on the built-in led for that i will write digital right pin number two comma high as the led built in is on the digital pin two and i will write else if the data is zero i'll simply turn off that led pretty simple now we have to define this as output so i will go to the setup part and here i will write pin mode comma into the brackets two comma output great okay so as soon as the button will be changed we'll be able to turn on and off the led now it's the time to uh, send the data of the temperature and humidity for that first need to de define the library of the dht sensor now here is also one really great thing we don't need to install any library let me show you the steps first of all we'll click on this open full editor that will be having a uh, way more options uh, to write the code for it okay as soon as you click on it a new window will be opened up so yeah here is our code now as you can see here is the library section and here we can search for different different libraries but the good thing is that if you click on library manager as you can see it says all the libraries included in the library manager are already available for your sketches means you can see there are so many libraries like there are 79 different pages and each page has like 10 to 20 libraries so i think like libraries for most of our sensors and development boards and we can say output devices are already included inside this uh, Arduino cloud platform so we don't need to import any of the library okay if I search for the DST sensor library you'll be able to see that that sensors library already exists inside the Arduino cloud platform so that's a super great thing we don't need to include the library we just need to include the library inside the main code and write the code for that so what I'll do I'll open the example code of the DST uh, uh, library here's that example code and I'll simply copy a couple of lines uh, from it. I'll fast forward this video. <clears throat> okay, so I have added all the necessary lines to read the data from the DHT11 sensor, okay? Like the pin number, like the DHT sensor type and everything, okay? After that, what I did is I created a function called as DHT sensor read, which is called inside the main loop. And inside that function, we are just reading the humidity value, which is stored inside the H variable and the temperature value, which is stored inside the T variable, okay? We can just uh, print that data into the serial monitor if we want. Let's just type the data for that. Okay, so whatever data coming from the sensor will be directly printed onto the serial monitor. But what we want is we don't want to display it on the serial monitor. Rather, we want to send that data to that dashboard to those widgets. And for that, we need to store this data into the particular variable that we have declared in the beginning of the video. And those variables are temperature and humidity. So what I'll do is I'll simply type uh, temperature is equal to T semicolon humidity let's see the spelling as well okay it's humidity only so humidity is equal to h so by typing these two lines i'll be successfully able to send the data to that dashboard widgets we can say okay uh here i have to write serial okay great and i will be sending that data at the interval of let's say one second great so with this, we have successfully written the code to control the LED as well as to send the sensors data to the cloud platform as well as to the serial monitor, okay? So now what I'll do is I'll click on this compile button to see if there are any uh, errors in this particular code or not. So I'll click here, verify and save. And one more thing, this code will be automatically saved onto your Arduino cloud platform, okay? So you don't need to download this uh, uh, onto your computer. You can download it, but you don't need to because it's already saved onto the cloud platform. Okay, it says DHT uh, does not name a type. Okay, sorry, I have to type this command inside the white setup part. Great, I'll again verify and save. Okay, so code is successfully compiled, so there are no errors now. Now what I'll do is I will be going to uh, Arduino uh, Cloud again. I'll click on leave page. It will take me back to that uh, previous page. Okay, I'll go to the sketch. And here is that sketch which I have already written. Now we need to directly upload the code onto the ESP32 board. Now you'll be surprised when I say you can directly upload the code 
using this web browser straight onto the ESP32 board. No need to have that Arduino software to be installed as I already stated in the in, the, in this video. Okay. Now the question is how to upload the code because as soon as I hover my arrow, uh, I I'm not able to click on this upload button. So to upload the code, you first need to have the Arduino. Uh, we can say create agent installed on your computer, and for that, as you can see, a uh, pop up appear here. So just click on the learn more button, and you have to uh, you know download this. Uh, we can say agent, and to download that, you just need to click on this download button in my case i already downloaded and installed on my computer so i'll uh, quickly start that arduino agent arduino create agent okay so as you can see the arduino create agent uh, is started running and as you can see now i am able to upload the code onto the esp32 board which is connected with my computer so i'll directly click on the upload button and and let's just wait for a couple of seconds and yeah, the status says success. That means it is completely successfully uploaded. Now uh, we also have the serial monitor inside this uh, web browser. So we have so many things here. So I'll quickly select the serial monitor and press the reset button onto my ESP32 board. Uh, it says failed to open the serial monitor. Uh, why is it so? Again, press the reset button. Okay. As you can see, it is uh, running all the code inside it. It is trying to connect to the Arduino cloud. Again, it is it is connected successfully. It's connected to my Wi-Fi router as well. And as you can see, I'm able to see the temperature and humidity data onto the serial monitor uh, that we have coded inside this particular uh, ESP32 board. Now, let's see uh, whether the data is coming onto the dashboard and whether we are able to control the LED or not. So I'll simply click on the dashboard and go inside the untitled dashboard okay so the humidity and temperature data is successfully displayed and it will be updated after every second so yeah we are able to see the data now it's the time to check if we are able to control the led or not so i'll turn on the camera on my smartphone okay so here is the esp32 board and as soon as i turn on the button on to this dashboard uh, okay as you can see the led got turned off and if i turn it off the built-in led the blue led got turned off so yeah we are also able to control the led using the web dashboard and we are also able to monitor the census data simultaneously now we are left with one last thing uh, that is to use mobile dashboard it's quite simple you don't need to do anything you just need to install this iot remote application by arduino after downloading that application just open it and log into your arduino account and as you can see the dashboard which you have configured appeared here just go inside the dashboard and as you can see all the widgets that you have configured inside the web dashboard automatically appeared into the mobile dashboard as well and from here you'll be able to monitor the census data and also you'll be able to control the ld using this button onto the dashboard and all the three things are connected that means uh, the data updated from the web dashboard will be automatically reflected to the esp32 board as well as the mobile dashboard and vice versa so yeah, this is how you can make your very first project using the Arduino IoT Cloud. It's simple, straightforward, easy to use and easy to make as well. And it's quite convenient because you don't need to have any external software, not even Arduino ID onto your computer. Now it's a time to see the plans. Okay, so right now I'm using the free plans, but they also have the paid plans. Let's just go to the plans and see uh, what they offer. So. Here are the plans. So in the free plans, we will be able to create two things. That means we'll be able to configure two devices, like two different ESP32 boards or the Node MC board and stuff like that. After that, we can create unlimited dashboards and we can store up to 100 MB of sketches. As I said, the sketches we write are already stored inside the cloud platform. So you can store up to 100 MB of Arduino codes. Okay. Straight out of that, here we will be having only one day data retention. That means all the data that is collected from your IoT device will be stored for only one single day in the free plan and 200 seconds per day of compilation time. Now, compilation time is a bit tricky. Let just uh, let me just show you its definition. So, compilation time is the amount of time available to verify the code and upload it to onto your board. So all the things like compiling and verifying and uploading the code is happened uh, with the help of the Arduino cloud. So you'll be able to verify different, different codes for only 200 seconds in one single day inside the free uh, plan. Okay. But they also have a, a paid versions. Uh, if you want to use it more often or for multiple devices like the entry maker, maker plus. Okay. So all the plans are displayed on the screen. So you can go through that. And uh, if, if you are liking it, if you are, uh, loving it if you want to use it quite often uh, for multiple devices you can go for different different plans so yeah that was all about the arduino iot cloud like a getting started video uh, i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got to learn something new from it if it's so 
consider liking this video. Also, let me know in the comments, like, what will you choose for your IoT projects? Is it Blink IoT platform or this Arduino IoT cloud? What will you choose? Do let me know in the comments. And that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now. Just wait for my next video to explore, learn, share with me. Techie SMS.